Hi everyone, um, welcome. So I wanted to talk about my blog, my blog series. I have a blog that I share thoughts that the Lord puts on my heart to share with you. So in this um, upload, I wanted to talk about my blog. I have been running a series called Righteousness. And it is interesting, I've been running this series because this is a time when the Lord is, is perfecting the church. And he put it on my heart to write about righteousness and teach about this topic of righteousness that the body of Christ needs to learn. You know, he says that when John 16, 13 says that, how about when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. So he is the one that told me to talk about it on my blog because at this time he is effecting on the hearts of men, on the hearts of people, that he is coming for a church that is perfect, a church that is without blemish. And there is no human person that lives in a body that can make themselves perfect. Perfection comes from God, hence his righteousness and why I'm talking about this topic of righteousness. So I'm going to talk about a little bit on righteousness, and then I will leave the link to my blog at the bottom of this post, and you can visit my blog, read about righteousness. Actually, I've uploaded four posts, read all of them, and I will be continuing on the series, so stay tuned. So let us begin. So I'm going to talk about perfection in four points. Praise the Lord. So the first point I'm going to talk about is perfection is God's requirement of his kids. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. For us to apologize for the thought of being perfect is to accuse God of asking us to do something he knew we couldn't do. If we cannot be perfect, why would Almighty God ask us to be perfect. Why would Jesus say, be ye therefore perfect, if he knew we couldn't be? So if we think we cannot be perfect, we are directly telling God in our hearts that his word is not true. Who sets the standard for perfection? God. God sets the standard for perfection, not yourself or your experience. In the days of Jesus, they did not think he was perfect. They crucified him. They asked him why he healed on the Sabbath. He told them that Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. And this is in Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. It says, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. He gave them two beautiful examples. You know, that he is Lord of the Sabbath. He gave these two examples to them. He said, how come David ate the bread that was only meant for the priests? Then he said, do you realize in the temple, that is in the Old Testament, the priests worked on the Sabbath because they had to keep the bread running. They had to keep the light running in the Holy of Holies, uh, in, the, in the tabernacle. I will not get into uh, all the particulars of the tabernacle, but we had the Holy of Holies, we had the outer court, we had the inner court, and priests had to be there constantly. So on Sabbath day, they were there. So technically, they were not supposed to be working. So Jesus was asking them, how come David ate the bread that was meant only for priests? And how come priests worked on the Sabbath? So he is Lord of the Sabbath. Um, so let us continue. The next thing that I want to talk about on this topic of righteousness. Remember, we are talking about righteousness. Who defines righteousness? So who is Jesus? Jesus was himself a manifestation of truth. Jesus was the will of the Father manifested to us. Jesus was God's will in totality. Everything about him, every thought he had, every action, all his words, when he passed by, it was God's will passing. He was a manifestation of the truth. God's will is not an act. It is not a thought. It is a man. And that man's name is Jesus. God's love is not a word or a statement of saying, I love you. In fact, God didn't say that we should say to him, I love you. He said, if you love me, prove your love 
by obeying my commandments. That which I say to you to say, that which I say to you to speak, that which I say to you to do, and in the New Testament we don't do, we are, the, we, we are done, like <laughs> that language. We are complete, we are perfect, we, we are the epitome of doingness. When people talk about obedience, they should see our lives, they should see the way we live, our ambience that we set around. We are the New Testament walking, you see? So, but uh, I do not want to digress. So, God's will is not an act, it's not a thought, it's a man. God's love is not a word or a statement. God's word is not something you do. God's love is a man. Jesus was God manifested to us. God is love and Jesus was God's will, God's word, God manifested to us. And if that's true, that God is love, then Jesus is love. Jesus is God's love in manifestation. When you say Jesus, when you saw him, you saw love. When you heard Jesus, you heard love. Point number three, why is this important to you and me? Why is it important to know that Jesus is God, his love? Why all these truths about Jesus? Because of the expression of his person. You can only live the life of perfection and excellence if you understand who Jesus is. If you do not know who Jesus is, you cannot know who you are. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye, we are complete in him, those that are born again, which is the head of all principality and power. Jesus was the expression of the Father's expression. Jesus was the expression of the Father's expression. That means when God wants you to know who he is, he said, look at Jesus. And you know today, who, when you want to know God, you look at who? You look at us. And how do we know who we are? In Jesus. So if you don't know who Jesus is, then you cannot know who you are. You see? Okay. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. This is the one that I just said. Jesus is the expression of the Father. Was, because now we are. As he, um, where is that? Jesus was the expression of the Father's expression. That's Hebrews 1 3. And this profound one I want you to write down, 1 John 4, 17. For that person thinking, how can I be perfect? It says, as he is, so am I in this world. Not as he was. As he sits on the throne with all his glory, all his majesty, all his wisdom. The Bible says all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in God. That is who you are. You're not somebody looking for answers. You are the one that brings the answers. You're not looking for help. You are not the poor looking for a rich person to help you. You are rich. This is why you must know who you are in Christ and what he did for you on the cross. Today, I am the expression of the Father's expression. You and I, we are. I'm the expression of Jesus. I am called the Word. You are called the Word. You know who the Word is? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you, had the, if you have the Word in you, and the Word is God, if you are one with the word, if you are born of the word, 1 Peter 1, 23, that means nothing is impossible. You are the God kind. You are not a human being. You are not a human being. You have to get this vocabulary out of your system. Yes, yes, that is not what you have learned before. But I'm bringing you the word of God. And you can also go and do the research yourself. I leave all the resources at the bottom of this uh, YouTube post and also on my blog. There are resources there. So the fourth point, I want to keep this short. The way you must understand perfection, see as God sees, Jesus was a baby born in Bethlehem. Jesus couldn't talk, but he was God. He could not feed himself, but he was God. Somebody had to feed him. He, was, he got angry and cried like every other baby. Did you ever think that God was, on, was born a baby? He began to crawl on the floor, on the floor but he was the son of God couldn't even do anything perfectly yet. He couldn't walk. He had to be taught how to sit. How could God be taught how to sit? Remember, we are talking about righteousness. We are talking about God, who is Jesus. Mary's mother had to teach him how to walk. Imagine the day he took his first steps. He and Father Joseph, they were, they were cheering. They are cheering at God. God can't take his first steps. This should 
begin to make you think, where am I going with this? A lot of times there are things he couldn't do. He couldn't do them because he was a baby. He was a child. He had to be taught. He had to be helped. Then they taught him how to talk. When you were born again, you were born a spiritual baby. It doesn't matter how old you were. You've got to learn. You've got to grow. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Imagine if Mary put the baby on the floor. He's not jumping up to talk to her. And then Mary says, But God said this is God. Why isn't God jumping up to talk to me? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how some, uh, some thoughts that some people have. Yeah, you have to learn the word of God to do things God's way. Not your experience, not what the world has said. If Mary said, the angel said he was God, but he's a baby, even though he is the son of God. He's not doing things like adults will do, but he's a perfect person, a perfect child, growing up doing things like he should do. Perfect. He is perfect, even if he can't do things like his parents. Jesus was perfect as a baby. He was God as a baby. In the house who set the standard, it wasn't baby Jesus. It's daddy who said what to do. Remember the day he was at the temple and he told them I was in my father's house. The Bible says he followed them and was subject to them. Look at yourself and stop worrying about the mistakes you made. After all, what did you know then? You're learning with so many voices campaigning for you to hear them. A little here, a little there. It turns out a mighty seed. The word of God is a seed. You are perfect. Only if you're perfect in your person can you produce perfect things. You cannot do perfect things except you're perfect. Perfection is possible because we are the righteousness of God. It's not your righteousness. It's not my righteousness. It's his righteousness. You cannot define God's righteousness without divining perfection. Righteousness is a result of righteousness in nature. This helps us to understand the difference of living in the spirit and walking in the flesh. If you walk in the spirit, you will not do spirit things. But if you walk in the flesh, that is how you are going to live. And you cannot do spiritual things. I will take that again. I'll correct that. If you walk in the flesh you will not do spirit things. But if you walk in the spirit, you will do spiritual things. God teaches us in the word to be consistent. Be consistent in the word. Consistency in walking with God is the most natural thing for a Christian who has the Holy Spirit. Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Holy Spirit is still the same. Praise the Lord. So you are perfect. Your perfection is not based that you are, if you lied, if you stole, if you did things that you think are not right, you're still perfect. Because perfection is not the standard of your definition. Perfection is an instrument of God's definition of righteousness. Praise the Lord. And now I want to talk about the Rhapsody of Realities. The Rhapsody of Realities is the book that changed my life. Everything that I'm talking to you about today, my revelation increased as I was doing devotionals with the Rhapsody of Realities, Rhapsody of Realities, I want to encourage you, if you have not heard about this book, get to rhapsodyofrealities.org. It will change your life. God bless you. Check out my blog. I will leave the blog link for righteousness at the bottom. See you next time. Bye.